the La Rouge Duo Ultra Tenue Gloss. I sound like I'm having a stroke. <laughs> Hey makeup friends, today we're going to be talking about items that I have purchased because of YouTube. But before we get started, I just want to welcome you back to my channel, or if you are new here, then welcome. My name is Kara. I'm a 40 year old professional with two kids and a massive love of makeup. On my channel, we like to mix beauty, brains, with the occasional f-bomb, so if that sounds like something you're interested in, just keep watching. So today is going to be a positive video. We love that over here. Okay, so there's quite a few items here, and I think we can get through a big chunk of them if we just, first of all, pay attention to the items that I have bought because of Britt Clark. So, let's talk cheek products. So these are three different beauty wands from Charlotte Tilbury. I have the contour wand, and then I have two of the highlighting wands. I have Pillow Talk and Spotlight, and these are all fantastic. I will say the contour. So I have the shade Fair Medium and it comes out looking straight up hor horrifying if you have my kind of skin tone. However, once it blends out, it's a very realistic looking contour shade. So this is one that I really do like. And then these highlighters, they're so beautiful. While I could do without the little like fuzzy tip applicator, I'm not super wild on that. The product does apply very easily and then I just use a brush to just sort of disperse it over my face. This one here is Spotlight and then this one is Pillow Talk over here. But you can see how blinding they are and just how beautiful they are. I also have two Patrick Ta products that were recommended to me by Brit. One is the Cheek Duo and the other is one of his lipsticks. So the Cheek Duo shade that I have is Do We Know Her? This is fairly new to my collection, however, it has become a fast favorite. So you have the cream shade here, and then this is a powder blush. You can layer them, you can just apply one versus the other. I like the packaging on here, that it has this little plastic cover so that the powders don't accidentally end up mixed in with the cream. And overall, it's just a beautiful product. I do have one of his original blushes and I find that it is very lacking in pigmentation, even on my skin tone. I have to really build it up for it to be seen. This one, however, packs far more of a punch. So if you're gonna invest in one, obviously depending on your skin tone, but I would recommend the duo over just the single blush pan. The lipstick that I have here is in the shade Oshi oh Single and it's just a nice nude shade. And this just has a very creamy, very comfortable formula. It is what I would consider to be more of a demi-matte. It's not a straight matte finish, but nor is it sort of satiny. It's kind of between a satin and a matte, and it just wears very nicely and is just very comfortable on the lips, and I really appreciate that. And then I do have another lipstick that Britt recommended. This one is from Juvia's Place and I have it in the shade Hashtag 2020. You can see that it's a much more rose-toned shade, but again, that same kind of finish and also a very creamy and comfortable formula. I also have to give credit to Brit for the Dior Air Flash Foundation. This was one that I was like, eh, I don't know how to use that. I don't think I wanna take the time to figure out the learning curve. It seems messy, blah, blah, blah. And she kind of gave me a crash course on how to apply it, strongly recommended it, She's not wrong. In fact, this one made it into my favorites for September. It's just such a nice foundation. It wears beautifully. It's very comfortable on the skin. Offers the right amount of coverage for my liking. So sort of in that medium, maybe edging a little bit more towards the light side of it, just depending on how you apply it. And it actually is very easy to work with. I just spray it on my brush and then blend it onto my skin that way. And it's just a beautiful product. Now, while there are other items that Brit has recommended that I also love in my collection, namely the Lunar Beauty palettes, um, I don't want this video to be necessarily Brit made me buy it. It's supposed to be YouTube made me buy it. So let's move on to somebody else. Why don't we move on to Mel Thompson? Her raving about the cookie highlighter from Benefit caused me to pick it up and she is not wrong. Horrific packaging aside, like truly horrific packaging aside, 
This is probably my favorite highlighter in my collection. I think it is so incredibly beautiful. It has like a little bit of a pinky, peachy sheen to it, but nothing too strong. It is blinding. It blends out beautifully. It applies nicely. It's just a gorgeous highlighter. I don't find that it emphasizes any sort of texture that I have going on on my skin. It's just so beautiful, but I truly wish, I really wish that Benefit would up their packaging game, put it into a nice little compact, and they could have such a nice, fresh look to their line, but for some reason, they insist on these god-awful box packages, and I don't understand it. Since we've already talked about Charlotte Tilbury, I'm going to bring it up again with this item here. This is the Hollywood Flawless Filter for a blah 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 glow. I, I can't remember. It's got some huge long name and all the lettering on my bottle has gone wonky. So I can't actually read it. I don't understand how that happened. It's like it all just kind of melted off. I don't really get that. But regardless, it's what's inside that counts. Um, and this is in the shade 2 Light. And this is just one of those products that I really didn't understand what it was for until Samantha Ravendahl was raving about it and was showing how she uses it. And I, cause I couldn't figure out if it was a primer, if it was a highlighter, if well, like what the hell it was, it's both. It's whatever you want it to be. Here is my skin with it blended in. So this is a product that you can wear underneath your foundation. It also applies nicely on top of the foundation and just gives a little bit more of a subtle kind of highlight, but really blends in with the other products that you have. I'll admit, it's not the product that I use on an everyday basis, but when I really do want to take the time, I really do want to have more of like a natural glow kind of look to my skin, this is the product that I reach for for that purpose. Now, I don't think that it's possible to spend too much time on Michelle Wong's channel without then going and purchasing something super pricey. In my case, Chanel. So in specific, this item here and this blush over here. Now, luckily, I am Canadian. We do have access to Shoppers Drug Mart. They have an amazing point system. So pretty much every Chanel product that I have purchased has been free, basically, using points. Uh, particularly with respect to these liquid lipsticks because I have, I think, seven or eight of them. And there's no shame in my game. Uh, this color in particular is called Sweet Berry. And so on the one end, you get your liquid lipstick. It just has a regular doe foot applicator. I'll just swatch that one just for the purposes of showing you. I'm not going to bring them all out. I have swatched them all in a previous video and I'll try to remember to stick it up over here in the cards. So there is Sweet Berry. And then on the other end is just a clear gloss with a little brush applicator. So basically you apply the liquid lipstick, let it dry down a bit. It's going to be super sticky. You're going to think this is a terrible product because it feels terrible. Then you apply the gloss. There is no stickiness. It doesn't transfer and it lasts for hours. It is probably the longest lasting liquid lipstick that I own and it's incredibly comfortable on the lips. So this one, I have zero regrets and this is also why I own seven or eight of them. The blush, I in particular this shade, because I ended up buying another one of these blushes because I like them so much, but this shade is called Reflex and it's a little bit of a shimmery golden peach. So there is like a peach base to it and then it has a bit of like gold shimmer running throughout it, but it's not glittery. And it's just, it's so, so pretty. When it applies to the skin, it has like a little bit of that sort of almost like an ethereal look to it because of that shimmer in it. But when you look really closely at it, you can't see any particles that would make it shimmery. Like it's not a micro glitter. It's not glittery at all. It just has a sheen to it. And it's so beautiful. I will warn and I have warned before these smell very strongly of rose, so if you don't like that scent or you don't like scents in general, I would steer clear of these blushes, but if you don't mind that scent, these are beautiful, beautiful blushes. Another pricey product that I purchased on the recommendation of a YouTuber is this one here. This is the Tatcha Liquid Silk Canvas, and this was highly recommended by Teresa Is Dead, with good reason. It is lovely. It feels like you're applying skincare it doesn't have that like silicone slippery feel. I always talk about that simply because I hate that feel. Like I'm very texture driven and the slipperiness of that, I just, ugh, it just turns me off. I can't handle that. 
So I don't think you're going to be able to see anything. It doesn't really add a ton of illumination or anything like that to the skin. You can see a little bit, but it does help, I find, to make the foundation just apply really smoothly on top of it. It adds like a hydrating element to my skin. It smells divine, so there's that. But overall, it just helps to just provide that nice, even canvas for application on top of it. It's not, yeah, like I said, it's not, um, like I wouldn't say that it's an illuminating primer at all. I think it reminds me very much of the Dior Backstage Primer that I rave about as well. Um, but this one certainly smells nicer than the Dior. It smells like a spa. So it, in terms of just like application experience, I really like this. I think this full size bottle is gonna last you like three and a half lifetimes. So if you wanna try it, I would just recommend getting the mini, but it's a lovely product. I really like this one. Also, as part of my base, this guy right here, this is the powder concealer from Bare Minerals. It's actually called the Eye Brightener Broad Spectrum SPF 20 Sunscreen in the shade Well Rested, but I think powder concealer is just easier to say. So there it is. This one I learned about from Alexandra Anel, and it's so fantastic. I have talked about it so many times. I like it using it to set other concealers, like concealers that don't have as much coverage as I would like them to have. I will boost it with this, but I also really like it on its own as well, especially on no slash low makeup days when I'm just sort of, I wanna get my child out to dance class or whatever, but I don't wanna look like I just rolled out of bed because typically I just have rolled out of bed. So I wanna put in like a minimal amount of effort, but not a whole lot. This gets the job done. And it offers a lot of sort of brightening, but it's not like, it's not harsh in the way that a liquid concealer can be in that it blends out nicely and just kind of fades into the rest of my face. So on days when I am just wearing it on its own, I don't have to bother with foundation or anything of that sort, but it also doesn't look weird. Like I don't just have like this like full coverage going on over here and nothing else. So it's not like, wow, what did you do to your under eyes? This just looks very natural under there, although it does brighten everything up. I hope that makes sense. Moving on. All right. Sam March. This guy right over here entirely because of her. So this is the Jouer Champagne, and I'm going to call them macarons because I don't know how else to say it. It is the Sweet Cheeks palette. So you get a highlighter, two blushes, and a bronzer. As you can see, the highlighter in here Stellar. This is Citrine, which they do sell individually, so if you don't want a full cheek palette but you are in the market for a highlighter, I highly recommend Citrine. It's beautiful. But she had posted about this, I think I saw it on Twitter, and just the pictures that she posted drew me in because I had seen it floating around and I was kind of like, nah, I don't know, I've bought two other Jouer face palettes before, I don't get a ton of use out of them, nah. but when I saw her pictures I was just like, Oh, that looks beautiful. And then she was telling me just how lovely it is. So I picked it up and sadly the bronzer came a little bit damaged, but that's not Jouer's fault. That's Canada Post, frankly. Uh, but this one is beautiful. The other face palettes that I have, I think they have something like six or seven pans in it. I don't get a ton of use out of it because there's shades in there that just don't work for my skin tone, blah, blah. You know the story. This, this was made for my face. This is exactly what happened is Jouer took a picture of me and was like, let's make the perfect face palette for this person. No, they didn't. But in my world, yes, they did. Because this is perfect for me. This bronzer, perfect tone. Both of these blushes show up beautifully on my skin without being super overwhelming or without me having to like work really hard to build up the pigmentation. One is a matte finish. One has a little bit more of a shimmer to it. Although again, not glittery. I can pair them together, I can wear them on their own, they're both gorgeous, and like I said, this highlighter is just, it's so pretty. It reminds me of Cookie, to be honest. Same kind of tone, with just a hint. This one's a little bit more golden, whereas Cookie is a little bit more pink. Why don't we just, because they're both out, why don't we do a little compare if you dare. But the texture of them feels very similar. Cookie is a little bit more high shine, but Citrine is still gorgeous. So Citrine is on top and then Cookie is on the bottom. So you can see the difference in the undertones there. 
This little guy here is all Kate the Great's fault. So Kate, thank you. This is from Natasha Denona. This is one of the Chromium Liquid Multi-Chrome Eyeshadows in the shade Scarab. I'm pretty sure this was in my favorites from September as well. And if it wasn't, it should have been. That's just an oversight on my part because this is so stunning. It's so beautiful. It has this strong greeny gold shift. It looks like you're wearing like an actual like beetle exoskeleton on your eyes, but it's so, it's so beautiful. The camera's not doing it justice. The camera just keeps picking up the gold in it. But when I look at it, like there's gold, there's green, there's gold again. It's so, so beautiful. Can you see it? Would you please work for me, please? There, there, there it is. See the green? And then gold. And then green and then gold. It's stunning. So beautiful. And it's very easy to work with. I've said in other videos, but I'll repeat it here. I just use a really flat shader brush and just sort of pat it on the lid and then sort of buff out the edge, like the edges using the edge of the brush. I don't apply it with the doe foot because I think you're going to get way too much um, product. Wow, I just totally gapped on the word. You're going to get way too much product if you go in with the doe foot, but just pick a little bit of it up with a flat shader brush, pat it on. It locks into place. It doesn't crease on me, it doesn't flake off, it doesn't do anything except stay on your eyelids all day, looking flawlessly gorgeous. The last product that I have to share with you that I have been influenced to purchase is what is on my eyes today. This palette is very new to my collection. This is the first time that I played with it, but I can already tell just how much I'm going to love it. And it is the Blueberry Muffin Palette from BH Cosmetics. Angelica Neekvist picked this up and she raved about it and so I had to try it out as well. The color story is right up my alley. The friggin the background on the packaging makes it really hard for you to be able to see <laughs> what's going on in here. But basically there's some neutral options, a few cooler tones, then you can see the blues in there as well. I stuck with very neutral tones today because I had a Zoom court date earlier today, so I didn't think that, you know, blue shimmer all over my lids was going to be soups appropriate for that. But the mattes blended so effortlessly. And the two shimmers that I chose are like beautiful. They are so beautiful. I cannot wait to dive into this shade here called Tempting and this one over here called So Good and Cheat Day. And I'm just, I'm so excited to play with this. I'm already blown away. I tried the BH Cosmetics, what the heck's it called? This guy over here, the Cherry on Top palette. And, whew, BH has been sleeping on us, I think. I like, they've always been good, but now they're like incredible. And this palette in particular, mm, so good. Uh, and this one from the four shades that I've used today performs every bit as well as this one. Keep it up, BH, keep it up, because, because, so good. Also, I kind of have to give credit to the shirt here to Angie. Not that she recommended this shirt in particular, but she does like, she does the puffy sleeve thing and she pulls it off so well. And these aren't like super puffy, but they're kind of puffy adjacent. You know what I mean? Like they got a hint of the puff going on. So I'm kind of like stepping out of my comfort zone when it comes to clothes as well. And also I have to thank Karen Harris for that as well. We've got the layered ne necklaces going on and I'm not wearing it today, but the leopard print and I have a leopard print shirt. Also credit to Karen Harris for that because she is my accessory queen and she's getting me out of my comfort zone. So thank you to both of those beautiful ladies. Okay. So before we end this video, then I wanted to talk about three items that, well, two items that I don't hear anybody talk about. One that I've heard a lot of people talk about, but I'm going to mention again anyways. So these are three products that I would like to influence other influencers to test out and try for themselves. So let's talk about the one that I think most people have already figured out and that is Cleona. Cleona Cosmetics. So this normally sits in the background. So the more astute amongst you may have noticed, but don't feel bad if you didn't because I would never have noticed either the multi-chromes in particular, part of their stained glass collection. Holy crap, they're gorgeous. They are absolutely phenomenal. They're so beautiful, oh my goodness. And 
from experience, this camera is not going to pick up just how beautiful they are, but it's not going to stop me from trying. So yeah, it's not picking up the shift in them, but even without the shift, like, holy balls, they're gorgeous. Like, they're so beautiful. The last two products aren't nearly as exciting as those multi-chromes from Cleona. However, they're still very good products, and there's some that I just don't hear people talking about. So up first are brushes from Volaire. These are so good, and I've had them for, oh gosh, probably close to two years at this point, and like only this, two of them, only two of them are just starting to splay now, and even at that, it's not really all that bad. It's really not. Here, I can hold it up to the side so you can see. There's just a couple little odd hairs kind of sticking out, but they've held their shape. They've been washed a gajillion times, not recently, but they've been washed. And they just, they offer a ton of different shapes. I think the quality of the brushes is fantastic. And their price point is, I think, around $14 US for these, like each brush. And then the face brushes are probably around the $20 to $30 mark. I don't have any of the face brushes, but their eye brushes are so good. So this one here is a little shader brush. This one is the E06. This little tiny guy, I really like this one for doing like my inner corner. This one is the E09. Then we've got this brush over here, which looks very similar to the Sigma E25. This one is the E03. And then finally, this guy over here is the E07. And this one reminds me of the Wayne Goss 19, I think it is, if I can find it. Yes. So this is the Wayne Goss brush number 19. This is the, what did I say, E07? Yes. And they are incredibly similar except this one was about 30 some odd dollars and this one was like 14. So. And then last but not least is a liquid liner and this one is from ABH. It's just called liquid liner. It's only available in one color, although I really wish that they would expand that range because it's such a good, good liner. It's a felt tip liner. I'll show you. There is a bit of flexibility to the end of that, but not to the point where it's like a pain in the butt to work with. It is stark black. It dries very quickly. It dries fully matte. I just really, really like this liquid liner. I just find it so easy to work with. Even though it dries quickly, when you're like sort of perfecting your line, it's not tugging against itself. It doesn't get sticky in any way and it's already starting to dry on my hand. I just applied it, as you saw, and it's already starting to dry, and you can see that it dries very matte. It's still a little wet up here, but down here, you can see the matte finish on it. It also doesn't feather, and it doesn't flake off during the day, so it lasts throughout the entire day. It will transfer a little bit before it dries down, so I just kind of like keep my eyes closed and fan it, but it dries so quickly that it's not a problem for me at all. I'm more concerned about whether or not a liquid liner is going to feather and this one doesn't. So I can deal with like the potential for transfer because there's a really easy workaround. So at any rate, this is one that I don't think I've heard anybody talk about. And I think it's super underrated because it's such a good liner. And there you have it. Those are the items that YouTube has made me buy and that I hope I can make YouTube buy. I would love to hear from you guys down below on what items you have been influenced to buy that you happen to love or hate as the case may be. But for now, I'm going to wrap this video up. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch and I will see you in my next one. Until then, just be a decent human being. Bye for now.